Thank you very much for introduction. So we're, uh, yeah, it's, uh, my name is Ivan Pelivanov, sorry, and uh, Vanya is a nickname because I'm, I have Russian roots. So uh, actually Vanya is the most popular name in Russia. So, and we're, <coughs> we got a call, so we, are, we belong to bioengineering. So this work is not related with bioengineering. So this is kind of, it was kind of a side project because Matt O'Donnell was, used to be a dean of engineering at UW. So, and we got a call from Boeing and we got uh, a little amount of money to kind of look inside the composites because Matt is, was very, very famous person and is a very famous person in biomedical ultrasound. So now it's more and more and more technologies from biomedicine go to NDT, to non-destructive testing because technologies and uh, biomedical imaging now are much more developed than in um, industrial ultrasound. So, and I will discuss more about capabilities of what we did. So we, uh, originally we were sponsored by Boeing and we um, kept sponsoring us for four years and next week or so I hope we will uh, sign another contract for three more years and uh, for like further development of our system and put our system to robotic arm and further to like robotics, like fully robotize our system. So, uh, and uh, when our work entitled now is a kind of portable laser ultrasound scanner for ultra fast non-contact fly-by-fly imaging of composites. So why it's important? Because uh, if you look at this uh, movie and uh, the rate of acid collisions on average is once per year per, for every aircraft. So not maybe so like huge collisions, but anyway, it happens pretty often. So this was actually originally a movie from Boeing. So, and it's not clear what to do after the impact because we must, uh, a pliable method for uh, control is visual control. And for composites actually, for composite materials, it's not very clear because it's very complex materials and we need to go really inside the structure. So, and, and our motivation is to develop new methods for composites. So and more and more components are made from composite structures and the spaceships, aircraft, wind turbine blades, cars, barracks, and sport equipment, so because these compo composite materials are lighter and provide sometimes better strain and better elastic uh, properties. So composite laminates can be damaged in different ways. And for example, impact actually the most common way and uh, again, composites are very complex, heterogeneous structures, and extremely easy, ex extremely difficult to predict a failure. And the failure is often uh, happens abrupt because it's a very reduced plasticity region is in comparison with metal. So, and uh, again, there are robust methods for idea of composites and seal and demand. So, and you need to start from uh, material development, fabrication, and uh, uh, and by component service. So there are several methods actually for NDT of composites. And first is transient thermography. So it's very, it's thermal method. It's very nice method for uh, like express analysis of uh, composite materials. So it's totally non-contact. Uh, but unfortunately this is diffusive method and doesn't provide any in-depth resolution. So we don't have information like distributed in depth. So X-ray is a gold standard in imaging. Of course, it provides like superior resolution, but unfortunately, you can't put your aircraft in an X-ray machine. So you need to cut a little piece and put into X-ray machine. It takes time, money. It's very time and money consuming uh, method. So ultrasound, so it's good method. So kind of universal methods which can look inside the structure, but unfortunately, it requires calculants and can't resolve single plies because components are very attenuative material. So we try, like started to try like to apply laser ultrasound. So the laser ultrasound actually basically is ultrasound in terms of propagation of waves inside the material. But we generate ultrasound with one laser beam with pulse laser radiation and also record uh, laser, I mean propagation of ultrasound inside at the surface. So we read this information with another laser beam of also with optics. So this method, it uses two optical sources and it's totally non-contact, okay? Uh, this was an idea. Uh, so this method so also can generate a uni-bipolar ultra-wideband ultrasound signals not achievable with any other techniques. 
So if you look at the conventional ultrasound signal, so uh, it, it looks like a very burst. So it's multiple cycles and the center at the spectrum is centered at a certain frequency and the resolution is determined by the envelope, by this envelope. So if you look at where a laser ultrasound, so you just you have half a cycle from this signal. And at the same characteristic frequency, you have at least three times better resolution. You, you can look deeper, you can resolve signal, single plies, so you can uh, get much better quality of imaging. So, but challenges, unfortunately, this is low, very low sensitivity of optical methods for the detection. So where these methods also are relatively slow, it's determined by pump laser, it's regularly, it's up to 200 years, but still very slow. Uh, it's also the lasers are bulky. This is actually small laser. Now with commercial systems, we use like, it's huge, huge system, like a couple of refrigerators or even more. So they're really monsters. So, and very high cost. So it's million dollars of cost. So what, uh, and actually for detection, so detection is based more uh, like mainly on interferometers. So you need to read displacement or vibrations to the surface. So to read vibrations of a surface, so people use their interferometers. So and this is like very common as uh, Michael's interferometer. So to get optical interferometry, so we need two beams. You need somehow to split two beams. So one beam, it goes to the sample, and then now it goes to the mirror. When we meet together, we interfere, and the oscillations of uh, or modulation of light intensity is proportional to ultrasound displacement at the surface. But unfortunately, so for our speech, for example, our step, footsteps, or any environmental noise, so if you go to real facility, it creates huge displacement. So ultrasound displacement sound the level of picometers or sometimes nanometers, but we create like micrometers displacement easily. So we can totally kill their detection sensitivity. So what we proposed instead of this, we proposed totally different way of uh, detection. So we proposed fiber optic interferometer, and we decided to split beams not by space, we decided to split beam, beams by time. So if you look at this, so we split the original, doesn't work unfortunately, so uh, original beam is split by time, so, by, so we split original beam, one propagates like you see a small boy, so it propagates by a short arm, and now it's girls propagation by a long arm. When we meet together at the sample, so we have a delay, and this delay determines like frequency band of field detection. So when we propagate, pro, prop, propagate back, so we switch propagation directions, and we meet together, exactly together. So and the efficiency of interference is approaching 100%, because these two arms propagate exactly the same paths, so, and it's only determined by their efficiency, it's only de determined by the amount of light they record. So if you use high numerical aperture optics, you can get 100% efficiency of interference. So this is kind of, you can see this interferometer, so it's a laboratory setup, and this is just a bunch of fibers. Everything is packed inside fibers. You don't have open space components, open space optics, etc. So no reference arm. It means that it's insensitive to environmental noise. So it's no stabilization is required, and it can work at any speeds, etc. So much not sensitive to surface roughness. So it's speckle noise, etc. It's also not sensitive. Extremely easy to adjust. You just need to rotate poly polarization pads here. It just and my five years old son does it very good. So you don't need to hire PhD. You need to. You can take a students from kindergarten. So it works. Very well. So, and uh, also it's very completely portable. You can pack it in the coffee can and it will work. So we can put it in the backpack and move interferometer from one location to another. So we use like a lot of also, a lot of our advantages, changeable bandwidth, uh, like uh, 1550 wavelength communication, telecommunication range, all the fiber components are cheap and uh, available in market. So, and uh, this is how our system uh, work. So we use also a very compact laser. So instead of huge monsters, so we use like a laser which on my hand. So this is very compact laser. It's very low cost. So it's a high repetition rate up to like kilohertz and higher. So, and of course, to record it, uh, we need a very sensitive interferometer. So, and this is how our system works. So this is small laser. 
So this is a super limited diet detector is a chip, just one centimeter in size, fiber optic interferometer, and two hats, transmit hat and receive hat. No any contact. So we can see a composite panel, so on display system. So we start moving. So you can see thousands of scans per second. So the sample moving. So and we record ultrasound. No any coupling. So fast scanning, you can, we can move faster. This is just laboratory setup. So and we record thousand A scans per second. No averaging. And we display, we save, we average, we do everything in real time. So and uh, scanning principle, yeah, it's very easy. So just one uh, line is A scan. If we scan over surface, we have one vertical plane. And we have multiple planes. We can get three-dimensional information and slice the image in any sections, including like sections parallel to front surface. This is called C-scan. So, and if we go further, so this is just example of some signals uh, from like testing samples. So we, we can see front wall, back wall, and defects, and also regular structure. So this kind of noise oscillation is not oscillation of detector, it's regular structure. And this was done specifically for Dick Bossy, like former boss of her. Uh, NDT team at uh, Boeing. So he didn't believe any pictures, like he wanted like a photograph. This is a photograph of oscilloscope. So you can see like sample regime, no averaging, single shot signal. So, and this is two dimensional image. So you can see defects, you can see all the layers inside the structure. If you're not interested in la layers, regular structure, you can easily filter. So you can get only defects and no structure. So the same, same data, you don't need to record again. So this is how it works, like real-time scanning. So we go by B scans and see like uh, defects in the structure. From C scan, you can look from the top and see like all the layers, different bandwidth, five and 10 megahertz. So you can now be approaching defects. Yeah, all the defects are very well seen. This is single shot data again, so very fast. And this is actually uh, impact, impact damage. So you can see how it goes inside. So in small dot at the surface and inside, it goes like a propeller from uh, point to point. So this is comparison with laser ultrasound left picture and micro CT right one. So we actually have better resolution than micro CT here. So and it's very fast, very fast imaging. We can resolve single pores like go further, so with just porosity, so you can see single pores and real composite structure. So imaging again, we go from top to bottom, like slices, and you can see uh, all the pores in the structure. You can see also wrinkles, so it's like waving of the structure. You can see like B scans going by vertical planes from one plane to another plane. You can see how these fibers are like distributed inside. So very high resolution, very fast. So we also can look at metal, so for example, record residual stress, uh, and uh, also use shear waves with the same generation. So because we generate all the waves simultaneously, surface waves, shear waves, and longitudinal waves, you can lose a joints. You don't, if you don't have access to the, uh, uh, from the top, you can use angled propagation. This is, for example, detection of like small drilling holes at the bottom surface. We can control, for example, additive manufacturing, et cetera. So it's very kind of powerful technology. And uh, finalizing this slide, so, and uh, people mostly use, this is actually very important. So people mostly use like about one joule lasers, very slow, huge, and super expensive. So we use two millijoules, three orders of magnitude less. Usually people for probe use from watts to kilowatts power. We use a small chip of 30 milliwatts. Again, three or four orders less. Uh, Johnson Nyquist noise, so it's noise of moleculars inside the sample, so we are approaching uh, this noise. So this is our system is just uh, ADB worse when uh, Johnson Nyquist noise that can't be beaten. So in 40 dB SNR in single shot. So multiple publications for the last five years, and we record almost everything. Again, most of the defects, porosity, heat damage, impact damage, like whatever, what you can find in composite materials. So we also issued multiple patents with Boeing, with our Boeing partner, partners. And uh, by characteristics, and actually, so we have a, 
a commercial light interferometer. So we created a spin-off company recently, a couple of months ago. So now the detector is commercialized uh, fully. So and uh, some uh, summary also and future work. Uh, we are going to sign a new contract with Boeing and work on different applications for image composite. Thank you very much.